The Metropolitan Museum of Art is home to one of the most diverse and comprehensive art collections in the world. Our textile collection encompasses over 38,000 objects, spanning nearly 5,000 years of history worldwide. The ongoing care and maintenance this collection requires is entrusted to our Department of Textile Conservation. Is this like similar to the warp thread color? Similar, That's, yeah, similar. The same, mm -hmm. yeah. Looks really good, what mm -hmm. a huge difference. Really. Originally established in 1973, the Department of Textile Conservation now works with 14 of the Met's curatorial departments on a constant stream of projects. Our international staff is highly specialized in dozens of conservation techniques. We provide cutting-edge conservation analysis as well as traditional treatments, including the patient plying of needle and thread to keep the Met's textile art safe from deterioration and ready for study and exhibition. Let's take a look. Some of the Met's largest works of art are the elaborate medieval and Renaissance tapestries and the gigantic carpets from India, Iran, and Turkey, several of which have passed through the expert hands of our textile conservators. In collaboration with the Department of Medieval Art and the Cloisters, our recent tapestry conservation campaigns include the Burgos Tapestry, the Unicorn, the Rose, and most recently, the Nine Heroes Tapestries. After nearly 70 years on display at the Cloisters, the King Arthur Tapestry was the first of the Met's Nine Hero series to be transferred to the Textiles Lab for conservation treatment. The tapestry showed signs of weakness due to years of hanging and environmental exposure. It was wet cleaned in a specially constructed bath in order to improve its visual appearance, then stabilized to protect its fragile condition before being reinstalled. One of the 17th century tapestries from the series, The Horses, made by the Mortlake Workshop, is displayed in the British galleries. The other tapestry is currently being conserved in a lab, a collaboration with the Department of European Sculpture and Decorative Arts. Can we make sure that this is like bigger? Can we blow out on the screen? Yeah. But the colors, the warp. The oh, colors are really still great. well preserved on the back. So you can see all the different shades of pink and mm -hmm. blue. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amazing. In addition to tapestries, our textile conservators care for a number of carpets in the Met's Islamic art collection. The Emperor's Carpet, a 16th century masterpiece of Iranian art, was completed for the opening of our renovated Islamic art galleries. Over the course of three years, three layers of silk lining were removed and 700 patches from different conservation campaigns over its lifespan. The carpet was then meticulously repaired and fully backed with three colors of wool fabric following its pattern layout. Now the carpet can be confidently displayed in the galleries on a rotational basis for our visitors. The Unhalt carpet, also in our Islamic collection, was once considered by experts to be an example of 19th century carpet weaving. After analyzing its fibers, knot count, and dye composition, we consulted with carpet specialist Walter Denning. Together, we concluded that the carpet actually aligned with 16th century attribution. Cases like this remind us of the importance of imaging at every stage of our conservation practice. We work with custom-designed microscopes to produce photomicrographic images, as well as x-rays, infrared, ultraviolet, 
and visible light sources for examination and documentation. By broadening our knowledge of fibers and weave structure, we learn more about when, where, and how a textile was made. All of this informs our appreciation and ongoing care of these fragile works of art. The Metz Egyptian textile collection is extensive and dates from 3000 BC to Roman times, and we are in constant collaboration with the Egyptian department to preserve it. In 2001, one of our textile conservators joined the Metz expedition team in Dashur, helping to develop new methodologies such as the mummy kit for excavating mummies with textiles. Back at the museum, modern technology allows us to examine even the most fragmentary material, adding significantly to our knowledge of ancient artists and societies. Dyeing thread is essential to textile conservation. Our dyeing machine can be customized for skein dyeing and smaller pieces of fabric. Whenever we use new thread to repair a textile or add supportive materials, the original color, including any discolored or stained areas, needs to be taken into account. We may need to do several rounds of dyeing experiments before we find the perfect match. Fortunately, dye recipes of various shades and tones have been well documented by our department predecessors, making it easier to arrive at a color match. I've seen that you selected some gels, Julia, and which one you are planning to use? Okay. So I believe that in this case, uh, the PEGI 6 uh, will be effective in re dissipating the dark area of the stain. A great choice. Yes. It's a great flexibility. Exactly. We will be able to do this with a very good control of the uh, water release. Right. The textile lab is developing innovative techniques, such as the use of nano-restore gels, to find new ways of safely cleaning sensitive textiles with minimal or no water. The lab also has a designated space for wet cleaning. Sometimes, wet cleaning is the only effective way to remove dust accumulation and stains due to decades of environmental exposure. After wet cleaning, the textile's fibers regain their flexibility and its colors are revived. Wet cleaning allows us to realign warp and weft yarns and restores the textile's original appearance. Ready? Mm -hmm. We can go up a little bit all the way to the blue, right? Okay, and then if you can pass them on. Adjust. Oh, adjust it. The color yeah. looks oh, great. I'm, I'm really, really happy yeah. with the result. Yeah. It was perfect to blend mm -hmm. to get that perfect match. Textile conservation conserves and maintains fiber art and sculpture, often from the Department of Modern and Contemporary Art, as well as other curatorial departments who collect contemporary three-dimensional textile and fiber art. For a 2019 exhibition at the Met Breuer, conservators engineered innovative display methods to bring more than 30 figures by the female Indian artist, Rinalini Mukherjee, to life. The textile department is an innovator in creating safe ways to pressure mount oversized textiles for exhibitions. The materials that form the support and padding between the mount and the plexiglass keep the textile secured with the correct amount of pressure. For a recent exhibition on the Japanese kimono, we use traditional lacquer robe stands, as well as mannequins, to optimize how these costumes could be seen. Since the early days of our department, 
our installation insertions have been widely adopted throughout the museum world. Even photography for the catalog involved a labor-intensive process of dressing each kimono. For the Art of Native America, the Charles and Valerie Diker Collection exhibition, we were especially sensitive to designing ways to exhibit costumes that would echo our respect for indigenous traditions. The Textile Conservation Department maintains one of the few reference collections of textiles, raw fibers, dye source plants, and implements from around the world. We often work with artisans around the world to document and preserve textile making traditions. Most recently, we collected and archived data on techniques from traditional Navajo weavers. Our conservators continuously search for new samples to add to our collection when conducting research in the field. Our department is developing a way to digitally document these practices in a way that showcases cross-cultural and cross-technical vocabulary, as well as technical analysis. As technology evolves, our aim is to continue to develop best practices and to share the beauty of textiles, obvious and hidden, as well as traditional techniques with our global community. Reflecting on 50 years of textile conservation at the Met, we have made extensive advancements in our skills and best practices, and we look toward the future with anticipation of even greater advancements ahead. We are proud of our history and our role in the field of textile conservation. By preserving our collection, we make it accessible to an ever-increasing audience. We hope that this glimpse into the textile conservator's world gives you a better understanding of our continued efforts to care for the Met's textile collection and to share our knowledge with the global community.